Wow, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Technical Forum of Hydrogen and Fuel Cells Europe. I'm Bernard Jekyll, I'm the moderator for today and the next days. And we really love to, pr to give you best presentations, best technical presentations of the subject hydrogen. And now we have a special, special presentation. It's about solid oxide fuel cell, the power units by Bosch. And we have the director of SOFC, solid oxide fuel cells, and stack development here. And it, it's Nadine Jung. And I'd like to come you on the stage. Yeah. Hello, everyone. And welcome to my presentation about the industrialization of solid oxide fuel cells at Bosch. I'm Nadine Jung, and I'm responsible for the development of cell and stack of solid oxide fuel cells. Climate change and the rising demand of electrical energy requires a sustainable energy supply for tomorrow. And we at Bosch are dedicated to techniques that contribute to a carbon neutral energy landscape without emissions. And here you see a solution to this. It's our solid oxide fuel cell system we newly develop at Bosch. And I will present it today to you. It reduces both CO2 and air pollution. And we can see here today first an overview of the history of the development of solid XL fuel cells at Bosch. Then I'll go into the details of our systems with you. And afterwards, I will give you a, an insight on the cell design we license from Cirrus Power Limited and we produce. OK, let's start with the history. So the solid oxide fuel cell system has, develop, has been developed at our Cobarate research. The Cobarate research started pretty early, and the first collaboration agreement with our partner, Cirrus Power Limited, has been signed in 2018. Afterwards, we built a cross-divisional team at Bosch to foster the development and prepare the market access. We're currently still in this development and industrialization step, and our big goal is the SOP in 2024 where we will enter the market with our systems. So far to the history, now I'll show you the, the system itself. Our system has an impressive performance. So we have 60% electrical efficiency, if you only take the electricity into account. But if you also take the heat into account, we have an efficiency of 85%. And just compare it with a coal power plant, you have 40% efficiency. So this is really impressive. And a single system, you can see here, so these are two systems. This is a single system. A single system has an electrical power of 10 kilowatts and additionally 3 kilowatt heat. This is a single system, but you can connect them to power plants and we produce megawatts in the end. So we are highly flexible at this point. Not only we are flexible in the connection and building up our systems, but we are also flexible in the fuel you supply. So we currently have a lot of systems running with natural gas or biogas. But if you have hydrogen, and even if you have green hydrogen, there's no CO2 emission at all, we can run all of them with our systems. So we are highly flexible at this point. But we are not only flexible in the fuel su you supply, we are also flexible where you, where you put the system. So we have a decentralized energy supply. You can put them wherever you need the energy. You just need a fuel supply. So we have a lot of use cases in the end. We have urban use cases, building sectors, industries, but we also apply it to data centers or even a wider range of use cases in the end. And we have a really good time to power. So as soon as you turn on our systems, you have in a short time frame real power coming out. You can see here on the right side uh, a cross-section of our systems. This is a single system here, but if you open it, there will be two stacks inside and a lot of supply around. And I'll now tell you more what's inside a system. 
Inside the system, it starts with the cell. The cell is the core of everything. You can see it here. This is the cell. The cell and the stack, they are licensed by Cirrus Power, but we are taking the lead in industrializing and manufacturing it. The cell and the stack both are manufactured in Bamberg. There is roughly coming one stack out of production nowadays from Bamberg plant. The stack then is transferred to our plant in Homburg. In Homburg, the hotbox is built up. The hotbox, as the name tells, is the hotbox with two stacks inside and some planes around. The hotbox then is added with an air and gas supply, with an electronic control unit, and with, a, with an exhaust system into a unit. And here you can see a single unit, which can then be connected to a, to a power plant. And the good thing here, all is coming from Bosch. All the components you can see here is from Bosch. And this is also a chance for our employees to transform to a new technology. So a lot of our employees based on combustion engines. But we can use these competences. We need these competences here in order to build this fuel cell, which allows us to have a fast market entry here. And just to see the dimensions here, you see there in the bottom, it's 1 meter 80 tall, but you can put it as a washing machine in the same size into your basement. And yeah, we, the, the control unit is from Salzgitter plant and the unit is assembled in Wernau. So we, we are spread all over Germany currently. And now I will go with you into the deep design of the cell. You can see here on the left side. As I mentioned earlier, the cell is licensed from our partner, Cirrus Power Limited. And here you can see the detailed autonomy of the efficient cell from Cirrus. You, we have at the basement here the ferretic steel. Here, with, this is the old design. The newer design you can see on our boot in, uh, on stand D55, which has two active areas. These active areas are covered with the ceramic layer. And on the right side, I don't need to explain to you the overall function of a fuel cell. I will now tell you more about the ceramic layers which are in there. So starting from the bottom with the laser drilled ferratic steel, which has a lo lot of laser holes inside there. And here we have the hydrogen in the bottom. The hydrogen is getting through the, the laser drilled holes through the substrate to the anode. The anode is a zero nickel cement and on the anode, the reaction is happening where the hydrogen emits the electron and gets the oxygen and the negative oxygen ion to the, to the electrolyte. The electrolyte is separated into three layers itself. It's a gadolinium dotted seria on the top and the bottom. And in between, there is the real electron blocking layer. So as the function electrolyte, it blocks the electron, but it transfers the negative oxygen ion. And the cathode itself, it's separated into two layers. We have there the cathode bulk layer, which is enhancing the function. And we have the cathode active layer. And the cathode is a lanthanum perovskite. And the cathode is exposed then to the oxygen, which is then reacting on the cathode. So far to the cell design, I'll now show you some facts and figures of the overall activity of fuel cells at Bosch. So Bosch is really believing in this technology because it helps us to the path to a decentralized energy supply, which then in the end will help us to get away from fossil fuels. So therefore, we are investing a lot of money in these technologies. You can see here on the left side the overall investment Bosch is taking in fuel cells. So we invest one billion into the PEM electrolyze. We are investing half a million, uh, 500 million into the SOFC project, which I'm talking about now. And we are investing 500 million into the electrolyzers. This is the overall investment we are taking. And on the right side, you can see some concrete numbers about the solid oxide fuel cell project. So I mentioned earlier, we have some systems already in field. So we have more than 50, nearly 100 systems actively running in the field. 
they are really producing energy out of natural gas, hydrogen or biogas. And this energy is used at Bosch, but also as external customers. For example, there is one system standing at the bus station in Bamberg, producing energy and heat for a bakery next by. We are really in the recruiting phase currently, so we are looking for new associates and we are increasing our project team. So we, by end of this year, we are nearly 700 employees only in the solid fuel cell um, project. We are on six plants all over Germany and we have a strong collaboration with our partner Sirius Power Limited. And these numbers emphasize that we are really taking this seriously. And the hydrogen economy is rising and we are happy to be part of it. We're believing in this technology and we hope to give a good feedback there and we are inviting you to join us in this journey in getting a new energy supply for tomorrow. And thanks for your attention. I'm happy to answer any question you have. Thank you very much, uh, uh, very ambitious. I wonder you mentioned biogas as a fuel. Is that, for example, in connection with uh, wastewater treatment or can you specify what type of biogas uh, you use as a fuel in, in your systems? So we are currently in the prototype phase and we are using, so, so we are using, or we are just establishing a use case where we are trying to use different biogas versions. Any more questions? Okay, thanks a lot for this really thanks. powerful and inspiring presentation. You're welcome. I really like your presence, how you present thanks. the fuel cells. And you'll find Nadine Jung at booth 55. 55, yes, 55. I'm looking forward.